Hello and welcome to my Twin Flame journey. I am Shine and this is going to be the monthly reading for December. Already, this is it. This is the last of the last before another year is upon us. Um, sure went quick, right? <laughs> Please keep in mind that these readings are general. So take what resonates and leave the rest. Also keep in mind that masculine and feminine stand more for an energy than a gender. So you may resonate with a side that is other than what you identify as. Um, if you'd like a personal reading, all the information is below. So let us see what's going on in December. When the masculine is thinking, nine of summer. Wishes come true, dreams fulfilled, a magical time of life. And then we have the nine of spring. Protect the fruits of your labors, prepare for possible challenges that lie ahead. Environmental conservation. And then we have the four of spring. Be grateful you have much to celebrate, deep feelings of peace and happiness, a contented personal life. So, of course, I have my little cards here that I will read a little bit more in depth of what these mean. But basically, it's some good things are happening for the masculine. Again, some masculines might be coming into some money. This has been in... in a theme that's been appearing in a couple of the readings. Um, so perhaps the masculine has finally come into some money where he feels like now he can make those moves that he's wanted to make. Or this is just them wanting to have that with the feminine. They want to have the nine of cups. They want to have the wishes fulfilled. They want to have the four of spring. They want stability. They want you know a home life. They want a commitment. But they're also prepared that it might be a challenge because a nine of spring is a nine of wands, which is the guy that's standing there beaten and battle weary, but who has one fight left, you know, but is very kind of alert, I'm going to say on guard. Um, but they kind of know that it's going to be a challenge because of what's transpired possibly because of how they've handled trying to come back in. And as I did the weekly reading, there's still things that are being hidden. There are still lies that are not being admitted to. There are still so, you know, there's still been some being met with somebody who's like, no, you need to come with more than that. You need to come with the truth, knowing the truth. So they kind of know that they're going to have to up their game. They're going to have to, again, come approach this whole situation from a place of growth, a place of integrity. And then my little hamster's awake. He says, <laughs> every morning, my little hamster, she's on the cage and is looking for for breakfast, looking for if I'm making anything that, that, that he can have some of. So he'll chew and chew to say, Mommy, you have any toast? You have any egg? You have anything for me? <laughs> it's, it's really cute. Oh, I love that little mouse. But anyway, as I've gotten off topic. Okay, Mommy's making a video. <laughs> um... That's kind of the, the overall thing as far as what, what he's thinking. And again, I say he, but it could be it's it's could be he or she, whoever identifies as the masculine. But you know, that that's what he that's what they want. But they know again that it's it's gonna be a challenge. They're gonna have to approach this situation again from a different place. A place of actual growth. What have you learned? You know, where we've been, where we are, where we're going. And see here, Nine of Cups. 
It's about integrity, completion, or final stages of development. Um, enjoying the pleasures of life, big ideas and grand schemes. I well, said he's he's thinking, how how do I how do I get this back? Happiness in all areas, satisfaction on all levels. It's the wish card, emotionally fulfilling, strengthening of a relationship or a consummation of a sexual one, like, you know, romantic relationship. Joy and happiness in your grasp, enjoying the abundance of life. Counting your blessings, stability, advancement, about to achieve something. It's because the nines is almost the ten. Ten of Cups is like even more fulfilling. And then, of course, the Nine of Wands, weary, injured. Final defense, final challenge to reach an accomplishment or a victory, to stand up for what you believe in or for what you want. You know, willing to stand up for what, what they want, which is this relationship. You know, it's it's close to success. Don't give up. You have what it takes to overcome, though it looks impossible. It's about hope and encouragement, standing firm, and, and hoping to achieve a goal. The last test or challenge, I guess they're giving it one last hurrah. Being resilient, patient, diligent. So that is that. And four of wands, of course is a time of fulfillment and satisfaction at the attainment of a goal, celebrations, homecomings, happy homes, stabilities, and firm foundations. You know, it can signify marriage. Um, maybe they're, again, wanting a commitment, wanting to become married, completing a significant phase in life, holiday time, get-togethers, you know, marriage, engagements, Settling down, peace offering. And so I, the some masculine seem like they're trying to offer some kind of peace offering. Some of them, it's it's financial, but like I said again, I think the feminine is looking for more than that. Moving from one stage to another, moving past mistakes and challenges to a place of peace, acceptance, and happiness. So see, those little cards help to give a little more detail. But that's the gist of what the masculine is thinking and how they're feeling. What the hell is that? You gotta wait, we'll get them on make you some toes. You gotta wait. <laughs> Don't mind me. Um, how they're feeling is it is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. They're hoping that it's safe to, to love. They're, they're hoping to get what they're looking for here. And then we also have unrequited love. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. Now this could mean because they are not expressing their love. So they know that until they open up, until they let down their guard, until they come correct, as I've been stating in other videos, they're not going to receive what it is that they're looking for. So it's either them needing to express their love or they feel like the feminine is not interested. The feminine is not showing them love because again, the feminine is looking for more than, than what it is that they've been coming up with. So it's been kind of like they've both been stuck in a place of stagnation. Like it's not moving it's not moving forward because people aren't budging in their standpoints. And for a lot of masculines, you know, it's about them still wanting to hide certain things and the feminine saying, well, if you want this, you can't do, do that anymore. No more lies, no more hiding things, no more omitting things, no more sweeping stuff under the rug. Like, again, the feminine is looking for more than what's what's been brought to her so far and I said why unrequited love 
And then we got pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. So I said, why unrequited love? Pay attention to the red flags. And then we have religious factors. Your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. So they know that this is a spiritual connection. They know that this bond, um, that there's a reason for it. There's a purpose for it in the, in the bigger picture. And they're trying to pay attention to that fact, which is why they're wanting to also make the effort. But again, they understand that they're going to be met with some opposition you know, you get nine of spring and unrequited love. It's like because, again, it's kind of like a stalemate right now. This one is standing firm in, in what they want, what they don't want, what they'll accept, what they won't accept. And this one's still trying to not, not be 100, <laughs> basically. Not be, um, still trying to do it their way which is kind of like the old way. And the old way isn't working anymore as far as keep taking somebody back, keep forgiving. Keep, you know, it's like it, there's a lot of stuff that's happened here. And this time around, in order to get it back, you're going to have to approach it again from a place of growth. And it will show this person that you have indeed grown, you have indeed learned, and it might make them be more open to considering a reconciliation because they see genuine effort, genuine remorse, genuineness, period, being truthful. I say, because you can't start something new with lies still lingering. And then we have forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. So they want this. But again, if you want forgiveness, you, you have to, you can't approach it in the way that you've been. You know, it says, the, whoever was the doer of the do, whoever is the one seeking for forgiveness for their actions, the first step is to hold oneself accountable for those actions, to speak the words, yes, I did this thing, and this thing hurt you, and I acknowledge your pain, and I realize that what I did was wrong and hurtful, and this is the efforts that I'm willing to make to try to rectify this, to try to get you to give me another chance to try to reestablish trust with you. This is the efforts that I'm going to make. Like these are the kind of conversations that need to be had, but some people are still possibly trying to leave out vital details that make them look like not such a good person. But if they figure if we don't look at that, then what I did wasn't so bad and that makes them feel less guilty and they're hoping that this person will just kind of like overlook things, maybe how they did in the past, and they can just move in without really having to look in the mirror, or really having to admit to their role and why this relationship fell apart. And again, in trying to do that, you're just disregarding this person's pain. You're making them feel even more ins insignificant, even more unimportant, like they don't matter at all. Just as long as one can save face, that's more important. My ego, my reputation, my whatever is more important than the truth. More important than your feelings. More important than whatever. And it can't be that way. Especially, again, if you're the one looking for another chance. If you're the one looking for forgiveness. You can't try to downplay what happened. Because whatever happened obviously was bad enough for this relationship to end. And, and again, and to not discuss it, it's, it's, it's not realistic. And you're only setting yourself, you're setting yourself up for disaster. So they're realizing this. They're trying to pay attention to how they can turn around this unrequited love or realizing within themselves again that they need to be more expressive to attain what it is that they're looking to attain here. 
And then we have <laughs> handsome. What are you doing, again? Handsome mommy loves you. Hold on. Oh, I feel bad. Wait, maybe I should stop this and start it again. He's looking for a little piece of toast. Maybe I need to make some. <laughs> He's looking for his breakfast. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'm oh, sorry. And we're back. I gave I gave Houdini Genie some popcorn. <laughs> he likes it. Oh, we got a siren going by. Um well, let's continue. This is the hopes. What is the masculine hoping for? Well, we have fair gray-haired woman which could be, you know, some of the feminines might be a more mature female, someone in their 40s and up, or someone who he views as mature. And then we have justice. So they're wanting to have justice or things to work out in their favor in regards to here in this relationship because they have sexual attraction. And then we have fame, which again is success. So they're hoping to have things work out the way they'd like. They'd like to have the nine of cups. They'd like to make a commitment, possibly marry the feminine. I don't think we need to clarify, but let's clarify anyway. Let's see. Justice. Because I know people like to get more detail. Justice. Justice. Biagio. Again, some masculines are, are might be needing to travel. Perhaps that's where they've been waiting for the money to be able to travel to move towards the feminine or to move forward with the feminine. Justice. So we have La Superbia, which is ego or arrogance. And ego can mean not just, you know, thinking we're all that, but it's also, you know, fear, worry, like any, any things that, that affect your ego. Releasing a need to release the ego in order to have what, what you're looking for, which is Lamante, the female lover, the love of the feminine, who you consider to be your best friend, your confidant. La Donna di Servizio, this is a uh, servant or a helper, um, perhaps someone who was helpful to you in the past, someone who was there for you, dependable. And this can also be, again, wanting to now have some kind of peace offering by offering some help to the feminine, whether it's financial or whatever it is, but there is a, a looking for a way back in for a lot of masculines and they're thinking that maybe that can be the way. Um, but perhaps they're finding out again that that's not enough. It's like the talks need to be had. The, you know, it's not just about a payout, you know, to ease one's conscience. It's like, it's about acknowledging someone else and how they were affected by things that you, you did. I said it takes two to tango, but definitely whoever is asking for the forgiveness is the one who, who kind of caused this relationship to end because of what actions they took. And then we have La Reunion. So again, it's, it's wanting to reunite. That's all in the justice. Sexual attraction. This is like uh, 
change, transformation, you know, metamorphosis, or just to become light, like to have the relationship, have that light feeling again, you know, because it, it, for it to transform from this heavy feeling. What the heck? Oops. Whoa. Well, there's a lot of, well, let's see what they say. Let's see what they say, because we had some flip over inside, some come out that were flipped over. Well, we have falsita here, which is lies, falseness. And then we have datore, which is, you know, healing. Someone who can solve a problem, this is a lawyer, doctor, but this is about change. This is all in sexual attraction. So wanting things to become light again, wanting to heal the relationship that ended because of lies and deception. And Allegraza Arquare, which is, you know, lightheartedness, celebrations, reuniting. This is also like the Three of Cups, which could signify third parties. So perhaps somebody cheated, perhaps somebody left somebody for someone else, and now, which is a karmic relationship, and realize that they made a mistake, which is why they're trying to come back over here. But again, you can't sweep something like that under the rug. You can't act like it didn't go down the way that it went down. You have to, I mean, it's like adding insult to injury. Or, what you know, it's, there needs to be clear communication in regards to what transpired here and why this relationship ended. And then we also have love. So, there's a want again, to heal the situation, to move forward, to let go of one's ego so that they can say what they know that they need to say in order to make this move forward, which is basically coming clean. So that celebrations can be had, or again, about this third party situation. How it all went down and how you realize it was a mistake. And now you're trying to come back. Like again, but you can't can't be trying to play things off like they didn't happen the way they happened. Because again, it just makes you look even worse. Foolish choices. There's also on sexual attraction. Lamante, the male lover. So maybe you gave your love to the wrong person. You were giving it to your karmic situation, and then you realize you should have been giving it to the feminine. Foolish choices. Mercante. And maybe you're stuck now at a distance <laughs> because this is the merchant. You know, so it could be someone who's at a distance. Um, and then we got in Pensiero, which is a thinking man, like trying to think of a way of how to, you know, reunite, how to get back together, how to negotiate and, 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 and to get what you want, which is to fix your mistake, your foolish choice, which was choosing someone other than who you should have chose. But let's see what the fears are. And he's chewing on a cage again. <laughs> well, he, he fears that there won't be any reconciliation. And fair gray-haired man, this, could, this is you. It's like the fair gray-haired woman. You could be somebody who's in their 40s or up. So this is just so maybe you fear you'll end up by yourself. <laughs> or they won't see you as someone who's matured, who's grown. Because again, it's like how, however you come across, that's how they're going to see you. Are they either going to see you as being the same old, same old? Still trying to use the same tactics that were used in the past to get chances? 
which probably consisted still of omitting things or sweeping stuff under the rug or however it is. It's like, but that doesn't work now. And it's causing frustration. So maybe you feel like you, you fear that you, you won't get out of this feeling. And, and you're worried. You know, you, you, you're having doubts as to whether or not you can have what it is that you're looking for now. Because, again, it, it's all on you and how you're presenting yourself. He said that that's playing a big part, a big part in whether or not this person is even going to consider it. And in power, you know, this is like the magnitude of something, or maybe you fear that what happened was just, it was too much, and there's going to be no chance. But again, that all depends on how you present yourself. Sometimes it is too much. Sometimes what transpired was just so jacked up that nobody wants to even deal anymore. You know, but there might be a chance. It just depends on, on the individuals, what transpired, what the history is. You know, again, keep in mind that these readings are general. Um, so let's see. I don't know if we, again, we need to clarify, but we will. Um, power. Eladro, the thief, and somebody that probably snuck off to be with somebody else. And that third party situation. Yeah. And then we have the precious gift. And then we have the death card, which is Morte, which is endings, complete detachment. You know, feeling that you've lost, like it's the end. This is in the fearing, fearing that you've, that there is, that the feminine has completely detached from this situation, that it's going to be done and that you're going to miss, you know, the opportunity to, to get back what you now realized was a precious gift that you had. Fair gray-haired man, Kaza, living situation. Maybe you fear, this is like the four of spring, you fear that you won't get back the feminine. You won't be able to create a home life. You won't be able to have this commitment, this stability. That's on fair gray haired man. Yeah, and Madonna de Servizio, and the reunion, and the Algraza the same cards again. So fearing that, you know, there won't be any reconciliations and happy times and maybe the feminine won't accept your help or offer you help. Or you won't find a way to help this relationship to come back together. Oh, <laughs> You know, okay, anyway, so here we have what the feminine is thinking as the hermit. She's, she's definitely thinking, she's contemplating. Find or be a mentor, take a break from society, a commitment to your spiritual growth. You know, she, this, we'll read the cards from here too, the extra little meanings. And then we have five of spring. You know, which is all about conflict. Could be external conflict, conflict between the two of you, unable to resolve this because, again, what this side needs, you haven't been giving. 
And that's what needs to be given in order for this person to even consider. So we have the conflict here. Are people feeling conflicted within themselves, wanting to look within. Then we have the Prince of Autumn, which is the Prince of Pen uh, Page of Pentacles. Cautious but wise action, meticulous attention to detail, kindness to others. You know, this again could be about the offer, which could be you know the financial offer, because Pentacles is could deal with money. Um, so feeling conflicted over this consolation prize or whatever it is that's coming in that they're feeling like, you know, this isn't really what I was looking for <laughs> um, from you. But, you know, there's, there's thinking going on here in regards to what to do. So, of course, the hermit is about achievement, growth, and accomplishment, attaining of a spiritual pinnacle, and ready to share knowledge with others, continuing our path of, of your choosing. Again, it, it's, it's trying to figure out what you want to do, where you want to go. Do you want to go down this path again, or do you want to go on your own? And again, how this person presents themselves is going to play a big part in their decision on whether or not to deal anymore. Um, path of initiation, wisdom and power, authority, a leader, the ability to use isolation and knowledge gained as a tool towards enlightenment, spiritual attainment. So searching for truth, attainment of goals and wisdom. So soul searching, introspection. Inner guidance. Page of Pen, um, Five of Wands, engaged in conflict, competition, petty arguments, differing beliefs. You know, because again, through this process, some people have uh, attained a little bit more in the spiritual uh, level than the other. You know, because they've had to go within, they've had to comp you know, contemplate stuff. Perhaps they've gotten more into their spirituality as a result of this relationship ending. So they've kind of been on a different path than this person has. So again, now they know what they want and what they don't want, what they'll accept and what they don't accept. And because the rose-colored glasses have come off for many people, they've, uh, they've realized that what they kept wanting from this person, this person wasn't able to give because they don't even embody those characteristics. A lot of times that we settle for and keep hoping that things will change or the person will change or they will somehow one day meet those standards, become the people that we always thought they were. But sometimes people don't, you know, and so it's like having to come to that realization that maybe you're just not even on the same level. You don't have... You know, how can you move forward if you're not on the same page? You know, so again, it's a being at odds um, in regards to how do we proceed forward if we're not even on the same level here anymore. You know, it's problem solving, differences of opinion, little progress, only conflict. Which again, it, it, that this stalemate is being, you know, stagnant, like things not moving forward. Because again, this person's just hoping and wishing, like, please, just you got it in you. You know what I mean? Like, I know you got it in you. Just do this. Just rip this band-aid off. Just let's do this the right way, so that I can make a decision on what I want to do here. And and many times, probably the feminine just feels disappointed every time she sees just the same old, same old. Strife, tension, conflict. Page of Pentacles, new beginnings, stable offers. Beginnings of awareness and money. Health and other material needs manifesting in the material world. Enthusiasm, desire and focus. A long-term goal. Putting in the plans and actions that lead to goals. Careful planning. Common sense. Beginning a new project or a new venture, enthusiasm, commitment, dedication, 
financial opportunity, manifestation. So again, it's trying to go within and figure out what, what to do in this situation. And how they feel is they got deception. Someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship because, again, they feel like somebody is still hiding behind the mask. Someone is still not being 100% honest. You know, still trying to be the one in control because when you release control, when you show yourself, you're again having to let go of the ego, having to let go of that fear. And a lot of people hold on to that because of childhood wounding or whatever it is. That's why they keep saying that for both of you, it's these childhood wounds that play a part in how you are in relationships. And a lot of it stems from fear. And a lot of masculines might have been spending their whole life wearing a mask in their relationships because they haven't dealt with what was within them that needed to be healed. Maybe because they didn't even realize what it was. Yeah, but, it's, but it's all psychology. So this person is still uncertain of this side's motives, of this side's, what do I want to say? I want to say prospects, but like, if they're thinking, you know, how can this work if I don't see really any growth here? I don't see this person being able to be what I need or how, I, how they should be considering. You know, and again, this doesn't make somebody feel secure about giving somebody another chance. If they feel like they're still omitting things, they're still lying, they're still, it's like, how can you trust somebody that lies all the time? I know like within my case, the way that that whole thing went down with me and mine last summer, till this day, he still can't even admit to the lies and deceptions that he was caught in, that I have video, email, pictures, everything to back up my narrative, as he likes to call it. It's like he will hold on to that mask for dear life, as opposed to just, you know, really, I, it's like, you can't, I was there, I know what happened. Like, you can't try to rewrite what happened or even tries to play off how he ended up where he did that he, he, he wasn't expecting it. He found love there, which is bullshit because I caught him two months before he moved out there professing his love to this person that he tried to tell me it was is, 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 uh, imaginary. <laughs> so again, even how he ended up there, he tries to play it off like he wasn't caught lying and scheming and having this person on the back burner and chose that option because it seemed more appealing to move, you know, to Italy which is what he did, you know, that was more appealing to him than, than having to work on himself here. So he tries to play it off like he went there not expecting to find love, but he, he ended up finding it, which is complete bullshit because he was working that person in order to move there, professing his love to her, but try to tell me again that I'm, I'm imagining stuff. Because see, this is this kind of stuff. I'm using this as an example to show the lengths <laughs> that some masculines will go to to still try to hide their lies and deceptions that they were caught in, which caused the relationship to end, but still try to play it off that it didn't happen that way. Because again, it just makes them look, well, like an ass. <laughs> Basically, I mean, there's no other way to say it, like a lying, cheating ass. And if they're trying to come back around, they're going to try to play it off like, oh, no, that didn't really happen that way. Or I wasn't really, you know, that heartless. And I didn't, you know, because they're trying to get back in, but not realizing that that does not work. You're just you're just presenting me with the same old, same old. There's no way I would ever trust you again if you can't even be honest about the things that you were caught in of why this relationship ended. Mine always tries to tell me, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk. It's like, really? How do you expect me to give you another chance if you don't even want to talk about it because you don't want to look at yourself? You don't want to admit to the kind of person that you are or that you can be when you're only thinking about yourself. I don't mean to go off topic, but
but I'm just showing an example from my example of this. I'm not willing to waver in what I want and what I don't want, what I'll accept and what I won't accept. I'm not the same person anymore. Pain is our greatest teacher. And I was completely destroyed by this person. So for, for me to even consider, which I'm having a really hard time doing, despite what the cards tell me, despite all the promises that the spirit world makes, it's like, yeah, well, I got to deal with him here in the 3D. And you have no control over this person in the 3D. So, so far how he's come to me and he's trying to offer me money. See how it works? So, like I said, some, some people might be in similar situations and I am putting my stuff out there to show. Um... As, as, a, as, a, as a heat of warning, again, to this side, how you come across is going to play a big part in if this side is going to even deal. Because I know from my situation, I'm not impressed by what I've been met with. So there's a warning, masculines. <laughs> and then we have reconciliation. Again, I didn't mean to go off. Well, I'm not really off topic, but I, I'm, I'm trying to show examples of how what's being said here in the cards does play out in real life because I can relate to what's being said here. And many of you probably can too. We have reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. But again, you f they, she feels like there's deception around this person still. This person still lies. They're still hiding stuff, even though they're wanting to reconcile or you're trying to decide whether or not to accept whatever offer is being extended here, but you're wary about it because for you, there's no emotional fulfillment because you're, again, you're not feeling like you're being acknowledged, that your pain is being acknowledged, that none of it matters. It just wants to be swept under the rug so that this person can save face. And it says, and it's not about that now. You're needing to let all that go. If you really want this relationship, if you really want to grow within yourself, even just first and foremost, Learn the lesson, because if you're still playing the same tune, you haven't really learned. You're just looking to be for people to forgive and forget. And that's it ain't going to happen. Let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others. You see, this is again, this plays like just like into my situation. Someone trying to offer some help, offer something as a peace treaty again without with without addressing what they did that caused this relationship to end instead trying to offer some kind of peace offering, give some money like to, to appease their guilt or to make nice or whatever and, and not really have to hold themselves accountable. So this is where the deception and reconciliation, again, someone's questioning the Prince of Autumn, questioning this help or this offer or, or maybe this one's asking for help. I don't know, whatever your situation is. And my hamster's chewing on that. And I said, why let your friends help you? And you got calling in your soulmate, your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. And I says, why let your friends help you calling in your soulmate? And it says heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. So this is more what the feminine is looking for. Heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Coming clean. Coming with your heart in your hand. What have you learned? Again, where we've been, where we are, where we're going. This is more what they need from you in order to bring together this relationship. It's not about money. It's not about whatever. It's about you showing that you give a damn about somebody other than yourself. Because more than likely... I said this, this relationship was probably very one-sided. One person doing all the giving, one person doing all the taking. You know, one person jumping through hoops, trying to prove their love, and the other person trying to, like, not wanting to fully go there because that's how they've been in most of their relationships because they fear love, fear letting down that guard because it makes you, again, vulnerable, just like being honest makes you vulnerable. You're afraid of what people will, how people will view you. But again, this person is fully aware of who you are and what transpired in that relationship. So you trying to still hide from this person, again, it's not working in your favor. You can't rewrite history to make yourself seem better. 
or make things seem not as bad. And what their hopes are is clarity. Again, people want to be clear. People want to know whatever decision that they make, that they're making a sound decision, that they're not going to have regrets about it later because they let this person sweep things under the rug and they just took them back and they found themselves in the same old position. Because if, you're, if you can sweep under the rug things from the past, what's going to prevent you from trying to do that in the future if you think you got away with it? So again, the warning is there. Dark-haired woman. This is the feminine feeling like this. You now she's hoping to gain clarity so she stops feeling like this. In her shadow side, fears, worries, anxiety, resentment, anger, hurt, pain. You know, she wants to let it go, as you can see in the weekly one. She was all about freeing herself. Like, people get tired of even feeling in this place, dealing with this situation, like pulling teeth to get what one should be getting. Which again, is just, it's just right now, it's just about honesty. Sincerity, you know. And then change. She's hoping for things to change with the brown-haired men. Because nobody, again, this is like many people are just, they're tired. They're tired of dealing with this situation. Tired of being in an unhappy place. Knowing that they can just move on with somebody else that doesn't come with all this crap. And probably would treat them a hundred times better than how they were treated in that relationship. And this is where they're trying to figure out, well, what do I want to do here? Do I want to go back to this? And, and, and especially if I'm being met with the same old, same old, that's not giving me much hope. Or do I want to just cut my losses and say, you know what? Obviously, this is, we're at an impasse. Because you're unwilling to do what you need to do to show genuine growth. And I'm on a different level now. And if you can't meet me here, then we, we, have, conf we have conflict. We're at odds. We want different things. You know, and, and this side probably, you know, has gained back or gained new standards. Again, what they're willing to accept and what they won't accept because you don't want to go through that kind of experience again. So you're going to be more choosy now in regards to who you entertain, who you allow in your, in your energy field. You know, you're, you're, you're being wiser in your selection of partners. So there is potential here. But again, it's not going to go anywhere unless this side comes correct. And I don't know, do we need to clarify? <laughs> Probably don't need to clarify. Um, what they fear is the master, maybe just not having any, gaining any control or clarity or anything over this situation at all, you know, in regards to love, and that there'll just be more heartbreak and that, you know, all is lost and that this person will never change and that there'll always be problems. There'll always be battling. It's like five of spring, like being at odds with somebody and that it's the, you just, you're at an impasse. You're stuck. It's a barrier here. There's just no way to move forward. Because you're not seeing the change that you would need to see in order, again, to even consider going down this road again. So, I, again, I don't think that we need to clarify. It's kind of... Because we're already at a half an hour. And I still have to do these and read the roomies and all that. So, again, y you see what it was. Um, so this side just wants to f get, get out of this feeling of, again, they want to be happy. People want to be happy. People want to move on. Especially it's December now. You know, they don't want to take into the new year this stuff. It's either, you know, step up, do what you have to do, show me something. Show me something. 
And if you can't, then I got to just, I got to find it with somebody else who I know will not be coming with all of this. You know, people want to free themselves. People are tired. And the advice for the masculine is inner child. I nurture the child within me through playfulness and self-care. So this is, again, healing those childhood wounds, letting go of those fears. Fears of taking off the mask, being genuine, authentic, honest, not fearing that, fearing being the real you, vulnerable. You know, it's healing, healing oneself and having faith. I have faith in God to heal this situation and have hope. I trust that God has wonderful solutions and brilliant plans in store for me. And they want you to be in the present moment. I am fully present in the here and now. So, you know, the master might be still having ruminating thoughts to fear of not getting another chance because of what happened in the past. So, again, trying to hide stuff so they don't look as so bad. So they feel like that that, that ups their chances of this person taking them back. It's like, well, you can't fool this person. This person was there. They know what happened. Their pain is their truth. No matter what spin you try to put on it, their pain tells them what happened. So the masculine could be, you know, again, thinking about the past, fearing the future. But they're wanting you to just release the ego, be present, be truthful and honest. Take off the mask. That's going to up your chances in this situation. Not going about it the way you have. And the advice for the feminine is caring. Heaven cares for me and I keep my heart open to caring about myself, others, and the world. It's about showing self-care. And if this side shows you some genuine efforts, you know, to extend that caring to them and also the mercy I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. Again, having mercy on oneself. If you don't feel that this is going to be successful, don't waste any more time on it. Have mercy on yourself and free yourself and find happiness within you and be open to, to, to new experiences. Or if this person, again, is showing genuine remorse or being honest or whatever, show that mercy and caring to them. And then you have devotion. As I fully commit to my values, relationships, and God, I am clear about what to do next. You know, they, they'd like to be clear. They like to see how much devotion you got. And this is about too about them being devoted again to themselves, to your own journey, to your own healing, self-love and self-respect. Like that's always first. Don't let somebody drag you through the mud just because it's your soulmate or it's your twin flame. You know, that's, that's, that's not people embodying the lessons learned. Don't self-sacrifice. And then we have joy. By enjoying this moment, I am giving thanks to God for my life. So it's again about you being present, being happy with the things that you do have, the relationships that you do have, you know, because that helps with your energy too, about being present. And then the advice for both of you is the Ace of Autumn. A windfall of money, advice, or assistance from others, a very successful project, a happy change in your career. So this, again, plays into the part of money. Or this is also an offer that's coming in in, in the material realm. It's like an opportunity here to build something stable. And we have the Ten of Summer. An emotionally fulfilling life with family or friends, raising children wisely, people you can trust, people you'd like to trust. But again, you can't trust somebody who's constantly lying. So in order to attain this opportunity, you know, again, perhaps the universe is going to help the masculine, give him, giving him some money to make what it is that he's wanting to manifest over on this side to be able to help him do that. 
because maybe they've been feeling stuck because they haven't had any money to move. They've been codependent, stuck in codependent relationships where the other person is like taking care of them basically because they're not doing what they need to be doing for themselves, but now they're trying to. So maybe the universe is going to help them out with some funds to be able to do that. But they're saying, you know, in order for you to have this tent of summer, you have to be some someone that someone can trust. And Ace of Pentacles here, commitment, stability, laying the groundwork, marriage, cohabitate, exclusive, getting engaged, stable, grounded, and practical, the hand of heaven, prosperity, growth, wealth, new beginnings, practical things, new investments, willingness for a new venture that should be accepted joyfully. Again, this is a universe giving you an opportunity. Don't mess it up by, by being in the ego. Um, law of attraction, too. Be positive in order to receive manifesting goals. A need to introduce something new into the equation. Yeah, a new way of being. It's an opportunity. Now, Ten of Cups, united by the bonds of true everlasting love that you have for each other. You have each other and all you could wish for. Children, home, fertility, free flow of feelings, abundance, stability, comforts of home, blessings, a highly spiritual omen, it's blessed from above, achievement of perfect love, enjoying the glory of the heavens here on earth, relationships, family, joy, dreams, wishes, love, good fortune, accomplishments, gratitude, peace, family celebrations and reunions, beginning of new love, satisfaction of a long-term commitment, love that's built over time with effort, like you have to put in the effort, it's not just about reconciling and then falling back into the old ways. It's a conscious effort every day to strive to become a better person and to put effort into this relationship. Values, following your heart and intuition, being inspired, inspired, happy, trust, fulfillment, harmony. Again, marriage, happiness, alignment. So this is all what can be had here. But you got to do it right. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture because it's all wor been worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. And because both people have to be ready. No more runner and chaser. And, and, and in order to do that, you have to express your love. You have to express your truth so that you can have this new beginning and you can have the Ten of Cups and the Nine of Cups, and the Four of Spring. And the Rumi Oracle that we picked today was Beyond Death and Life. So this is the, again, for you both, and it's the first one, number one. Footprints lead to the shore of the sea. Beyond that point, no trace remains. That's by Rumi. I am calling to you. Can you hear me? Listen. Within your heart, there I speak. My voice rings true. You are urged beyond what has been. The time has come. Lay it to rest now. This ending comes as grace to free you from all that you have known, for what you have known is now too small for your soul. Bear your uncertainty with equanimity. I am certain enough for both of us. Allow me to show you the light that you are that burns within you, blazing angel of heavenly purity. I will unveil you to yourself, undressing your ego, casting aside its layers as tender as a lover with unwavering attention upon the sacred body of light. You shall know yourself in truth as pure beyond all experience, untainted, ever innocent, as a pure vessel, stripped bare, ready for the divine revelation, as light, as life, as love. The soul craves variety because it leads to wholeness, and wholeness leads to divine revelation. The purpose of the soul incarnating in this world in the first place is to realize its divinity 
through the sacred crucible of life. The older the soul, the closer it is to the realization of divine oneness, and the more powerful its determination to shed that which would constrain complete and conscious immersion into the divine presence. So here you are. An old soul at the edge of something you have known, at the cusp of an ending and a beginning. Perhaps you are already in surrender and falling in, or perhaps you are fearful and resisting as you greet your unknown destiny. Yet this moment is happening because your own divine soul has chosen for it to be this way, so that love may grow. There is no punishment in this ending, nor is there anything to fear. There may be pain, there may be grief and loss, there may be uncertainty and even insecurity. Yet you have a big heart, enough to bear such growing pains. Your heart is even big enough to receive the joy that is lying in wait for you as you stumble across her in the course of your clumsy, inspired travails into new life. You can scoop her up in your arms and spin her wildly about as she delights in your embrace, throwing her head back and laughing her vibrant, contagious laughter, filling you with the exquisite ecstasy. Yes, you shall know the truth, the knowledge that the divine is with you, guiding every unfolding moment of your life journey. No matter how dark it may first appear, the divine is with you in unflinching generosity with compassion and with fierce passion for your blossoming into all that you are, all that you can be. So what must you do to receive this divine grace, this new life? You must be willing to face death. And maybe that death has come to you in the form of loss of a beloved one, a physical loss that takes you into the darkest despair or depths of your grieving heart. And maybe the death that comes to you in the ending of a financial or professional situation you once relied upon. It could also be in the sense that you don't really know who you are anymore. Old identities having shown themselves to be inadequate, inaccurate, mere ego masks, too small for the great being that you are starting to suspect you may be. Your death may be a choice to let go to take a step in a new direction, to move house, to end a relationship, to change career, or to step away from a religious or philosophical tradition, or a group or a teacher. Your death may not feel as though it has come by choice at all. It may be a sickness that leaves you feeling helpless, a relationship or other life circumstance changing when you wish with all your heart that it would not. Your transition through this death may be triggered by an inner feeling that you cannot quite pin down. Nonetheless, it is powerfully propelling you away from what has been and towards untapped possibilities, perhaps even towards great confusion as you encounter life in a new way, feeling even somewhat unprepared and uncertain as to what may lie ahead of you now. How you deal with this grace, hidden though it may at first appear to be under the cloak of crisis, is up to you. You have enough spiritual intelligence to shift perspective and to choose, if you wish, to rest your inner gaze upon what lies beyond the death. Gaze instead upon the new life that is calling you. When you know deep within that no matter what experiences you have had in your life, that you are untainted, you will be more easily able to trust in the love the divine has for you. You won't question your worthiness, and therefore you will trust in life more easily and more fully, no matter how much it asks of you at times. The divine is a relentless, a relentless lover. It wants nothing less than your total being to be held in its embrace. Sometimes that means we will have to give up lesser loves for the greater lover. The divine one that calls us to remember our true nature. You are a beautiful blazing soul having a human experience that defines explanation and opens you up to divinity. That is what is happening in your life now. Whether the death is obvious and painful to you or whether you are uncertain as to how it is yet showing up in your life. Either way, there is an ending imminent and new life coming to you with greater opportunity for your radiant soul to shine its beauty in the world. Grasp it eagerly, beloved. Now is not the time for fear or hesitation. Focus on what is becoming whilst honoring what is no longer to be. So it's about, again, out with the old and with the new. It's about changing within oneself. 
No more behaving in ways that stem from dysfunction, childhood wounding, fears, ego, whatever it is, whatever the things that no longer serve you now, based upon what you went through in this relationship, what this relationship should have taught you about yourself and how you treat other people. This is your moment, again, to show that you have learned, that you have grown, and that you're ready to embrace the new and improved you and be constantly striving for better versions of yourself every day. And again, that comes with consistent awareness of self, you know, knowledge of self. I know who I am. I know what my tendencies might be. I know what I need to keep in check or whatever it is. It's, it's having knowledge of self. And again, trying to be the best you that you can be, because that is part of your journey here, evolving in the soul. And you don't do that by lying, by keeping masks on, or whatever it is your thing. Addictive behaviors, codependent things, any, any of that. It's, it's about, again, letting all of that go, letting all of that die, because it needs to die. It's not for your highest best, and it's only keeping you in karmic cycles that need to be ended now, because you have enough awareness that you know that that stuff is no good, and it's not serving you, and it's not helping you or your relationships. Look beyond that. And don't let your fear keep you, again, from leaving lesser loves, which is your karmic relationships, and denying yourself the true love, which is your Life partner could be just a soulmate or could be a twin flame. But you'll know, because obviously if you're trying to go back to this, you realize what this was. So don't screw it up, again, by still clinging on to the old you, the old ways of being. Because you're going to miss the opportunity. Because you're not willing to let go again of the ego, of the fear. And you have to give this side some reassurance for, so that they can let go of their fears to give somebody another chance to try to earn back trust. And again, if all they see is you continuing to be in lies, that's not getting things off to a good, for, uh, good standing point. So on that note, my lovelies, I hope that the messages help you. You know, but I, I feel like a lot of it now is, it's, it's a you gotta, you gotta do this right or you're gonna miss. Because this side just doesn't want to go down that road again if they don't see that the person that they're going to travel with is, is, is changed or hasn't changed. So be wise, masculine, and be wise, feminine, too. Again, follow what makes you happy. Follow what makes you happy. And please like, subscribe, and share if you haven't already. And until next, and I hope I don't come across as, 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 you know, trying to tell people, I'm just relaying the message in the cards, and I'm also putting in my own experience from what I've learned in psychology, and I'm putting in my experience as I've gone through much similar things as you have. And I share tidbits of, of what I've gone through so that you can see how they can also relate in the cards to the storyline. Because even if you look at it, you might be like, oh, that doesn't really make sense. But maybe if you hear an, a different version or a spin on it based in reality stuff, you can say, ah, yes, yeah, now I understand. Or, yeah, that resonates now. Or So I hope that my sharing stuff is, is helpful, too. I try not to do it too much. But I just want to show, again, other aspects of how the cards can play into real life. And I wish you luck, again, everybody. Because this is it. This is December. Hopefully January's reading is going to be more positive. <laughs> the people have shed their stuff and have come together and, and everything's great or, you know, made peace with whatever and, and are moving on to, to, to whatever they feel is going to be more fulfilling for them. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.